everyone. That is my great honor to be here and to uh, share with you the experience that we have an, an organization called Asia PKI Consortium. But among our member countries that we share our experience and share the status of the development of PKI and other um, security, internet security applications. So uh, here I just summarize some of our experience here. And uh, so first of all, I work in some kind of background from PKIC. And then, and then the background uh, of the development of an e-authentication and e identification technology recently. And uh, after that, I will have some kind of a show I mean, uh, introduction of the status current. Uh, I uh, list some countries that we, we think that maybe can take a reference in the, rest, in the recent 20 or 10 years. They have very good uh, PKI applications. And uh, in the recent year, we, I think that as we just talked in this, um, in this conference, that PKI also has many challenges because there are new, uh, new technology, new development of the internet society. So I just share some new trends I learned, and uh, then we can just uh, think together what to go forward for the PKI, for the development of PKI. And uh, first of all, this is the background of Asia PKI Consortium. That uh, Asia PKI Consortium actually is a form maybe in 2001, very uh, long ago. And in two, uh, 2007, then, uh, we have an Asia PKI Consortium transfer from, uh, uh, before that, the organization was called the Asia PKI Forum. And in 2007, we just transferred to, transfer to Asia PKI Consortium. And uh, uh, the goal of this um, organization is to promote the development of PKI among Asia country. <coughs> and right now we have seven, uh, we have nine uh, principal member countries and also many enterprise members in our organization. In the, uh, in the past 10 years, the Asia PKI Consortium have some kind of achievements. Uh, here are these some of our um, uh, major, uh, major output or major achievements in recent years. Uh, the first one is about policy and technology. We have an Asia PKI accountability guideline, and we also have some, some kind of legal uh, survey of the legal status of PKI among many countries. And all, we also have some mutual recognition among countries that uh, in Greater China and also in Asia, uh, between Asia members. And uh, we also, uh, we also uh, work with uh, members to realize some cross-border applications, such as cross-border trading and financial applications. And uh, in the right side, we, have, we also have some promotion and uh, awareness activities. For example, we have an Asia PKI case study. We survey all the member countries what is the best practice of PKI. And uh, we also have an, an, a book for Asia PKI company list. We list all the uh, solutions provided among Asia countries. And uh, we also have some uh, contests or uh, awards that we recognize the best practice among member countries and give them prize and uh, some kind of honor. And uh, we also have some kind of mar uh, market survey among Asia countries. And we also uh, uh, work with uh, other global uh, organizations such as PAA, FACT, EPSCA, and also FIDO. So uh, back to the uh, PKI technology, what is it all about? I think that it's all about the uh, major, um, major goals. The first one is e-authentication, and the second one is e-identification, and the next one is e Nature. And uh, all these three um, uh, aspects of PKI also call our enterprise, e-commerce and government and financial service. So it's a very important uh, infrastructure for internet society. And uh, these the other uh, more important uh, goal that we try to put PKI into the industry, into the real use case application that can help every user and every service providers. So actually, 
we have some kind of technology. I think in, in this conference we talk a lot about what is a PKI, what is a PKC. So PKC is public key cryptography and PKI is public key infrastructure. And uh, it's already it already has very mature technology, more than 20 years. But uh, in, in the industry we all, we, we are also very focused on how to put such kind of technology into the real application. So if we look into the ecosystem, we have the user and we also have the identity provider, and service provider, and also certificate, uh, certificate authority. And uh, in the right hand, for user, we have many new uh, interface. So the first one is the password, is the most traditional methodology that what we know, password or some kind, some kind we you know. The second one is the token, software token or public token is something we have. And the last one is by metrics, that's what we are. So for user, they must face many different uh, technology or different tokens. And so the problem is that what is the best practice for user to be able to use the digital authentication, identification, or digital signature in a very, very convenient, convenient way. So I, I think that this is the most important for the user experience, user experience in the new internet era. So uh, if we uh, look more detail in what PKI can do, I, I think that uh, PKI is most important for the application of digital signature. Why? Because um, in most Asian countries, we all have a digital signature legislation. Let's say that for a digital, for a signa digital signature to be lead, to be compliant to legal regulation, they must use PKI. So in many Asian countries, at least for members of Asia PKI consortium, we also have similar digital signature leg legislation starting from uh, year 2000. So it's already a very, uh, very, very mature legal framework in every country. So that's why PKI is still very important right now because we have a legal foundation. And based on the legal foundation that many countries also uh, have some kind of a uh, national PKI <coughs> system. For example, in Korea, Korea has two national PKI systems. One is NPKI, one is GPKI. In China, in China, many uh, province or many application service provider, they already have their uh, PKI system. And for India, as we know, that the CCA is all, all, also an, uh, a very very good uh, national PKI infrastructure. And in Taiwan, we have government PKI, financial PKI. And also in Thailand, we have NRCA that was uh, organized by ETDA. That is also a national PKI infrastructure. And also in Hong Kong and Macau. In Hong Kong and Macau, the PKI was hosted by their uh, post office. So they also have a very good uh, PKI infrastructure. And also in Japan, in Japan, the government also has JPKI infrastructure. And uh, so we have a legal foundation, and we, we also have a national PKI, uh, uh, national PKI infrastructure. And uh, based on that infrastructure, there are some countries, starting from 20 years ago, started to think about what is the most important applications for PKI. Of course, the, one of the most important is government application. But in the other way, in the other way, for the private sector, the most important PK application, uh, we think that maybe it's financial transactions. Because for financial transactions, it's very, very, security is very important. And how to identify the user is also very important. So in some countries, they also mandatory PKI in their financial applications. For example, for Korea, Korea already mandatory PKI in their financial transaction more than 10 years. 
But since uh, 2014, the government reviewed the regulation for a financial transition, and they, they decided that they didn't mandatory PKI in the financial transition anymore. So right now, in Korea, they encourage the service provider to use some advanced technology in their financial transactions. But right now, Korea is also very uh, PKI still support many financial services. And in China, in China, that starting from this year, the government also put some regulation to say that for some transaction uh, above some certain amount, you have to use PKI starting from this year. And uh, in India, also have similar regulation, I, I think. Also in Taiwan, in, in Taiwan, there are two, uh, two financial transaction mandatory PKI. The first one is stock trading. So unlike stock trading in Taiwan, must be PKI. And the other one, similar with uh, Korea, and also uh, similar with China, India. The, if the financial transaction is above some certain amount, that must be PKI. So for financial transaction, in some countries also have some kind of um, regulation for PKI. And there are also many other um, uh, services or applications that use PKI in uh, Asia countries. For example, in many countries, we have a national EID infrastructure. So in many countries, the national EID infrastructure also use PKI as their foundation technology. For example, in in Taiwan, that we have a citizen, uh, we have the IC card for every citizen, and uh, such kind of IC card also use PKI certificate. And also, in many countries, that they have utilized PKI in their national ID system, EIA job to support the government and support the private sector, service in private sector uh, to provide a very secure transaction infrastructure, especially for digital signature. But I think starting from maybe five to ten years ago, the whole ICT system has changed a lot. So the first one is mobile. Then the internet platform transfer from the PC to a mobile uh, ecosystem. So in the mobile ecosystem, as I just said, that the, the user experience is very important. So how to use PKI in mobile device is a very convenient way. It's a challenge for PKI. And uh, I think that in recent years, in Asia PKI members, we are also discussing how to enable PKI in a very convenient mobile platform. But right now, I think it's still a very really big challenge. And uh, besides that, the mobile, uh, the mobile device, the platform for the mobile device was dominated by some big uh, internet companies, such as Google, Apple. And uh, I think in the Western world, the big uh, internet service company, they as I know that they didn't put too much attention to PKI. So right now, how to use PKI in such kind of inter mobile device platform, I think it's still a very still a big, big challenge. So based on such kind of, uh, of difficulty, that there are many internet service companies, they develop their own e-identification, e-authentication technology, and uh, in the recent year, I think the most popular is the biometrics. So five years, uh, five years ago, Apple had the Touch ID, and right now, it's evolved into the Face ID technology, and it's also uh, draw many interest in the inter internet ecosystem. So the, the challenge is that, is that what is the relation between 
PKI and the mobile device and also with the biometrics. Because the technology drive by the big internet company, they have a basic idea that they are very focused on the user experience. So why they are very focused on the deployment of e-identification and e-authentication uh, technology into the mobile and the biometrics um, system. So what is the, 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 how can PKI compete or work with such kind of ecosystem? I think this, this is a very big challenge for us. And in recent years, there are some uh, international activity that started try to to to, um, to consult all the efforts. So it's, we see that, that there are many international organizations drive by government or drive by private sectors try to address such kind of issues. Among them that in the recent year, I think the most important one that put mobile and biometrics experience into a into a very good user experience and also try to set up a very good ecosystem. So here, FIDO is a good example among them. That FIDO try to, to enable biometrics experience in mobile device and in the same time, they will keep the biometric data in the mobile device. So, Right now, uh, starting from 2012, they try to, they, there are some um, uh, internet service company, Google, PayPal, and uh, Lenovo, they try to form such kind of nice. And right now, they claim that they already have 3 million users worldwide that using Baidu technology as their identification, identification users. So this is a very important message that we have to take care of, that FIDO also use uh, PKC, public key, cryptography technology, and uh, the biometric technology. And uh, what the relationship between FIDO and PKI? And uh, beyond FIDO, there are also many other international organizations, such as NIST, W3C, OpenID, and Europe with the EID AS. Actually, Europe is some kind of similar to Asia country. Europe also has some kind of um, digital signature regulation that also mentioned about PKI. But in the same time, for example, in the EID AS framework, they also support other mechanisms as their um, trust service. So, what is the future of PKI? What is the, the position of PKI in the new internet or mobile internet ecosystem? That's what we have to we, we have to take care about. So here is some the survey among Asia countries. What we have done that here I just uh, take some countries example that I just mentioned that for Korea. <coughs> Also, a very good example of how PKI can be used in a financial service and also in many e-commerce services. In Korea, that started from maybe three years ago, as I said, that the government just uh, just revised the regulation that PKI is no longer mandatory in the financial service, and in the same time, the FIDO technology also entered the Korea market and supported by many Korea device manufacturing and also many financial institutes. And but PK is still very important in Korea. So in Korea the KISA, KISA is in charge of the e identification and notification framework in Korea. They just start start to set up the K Fido guideline. We try to put PK and Fido together and uh, to leverage the, the 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 advantage of PKI and in the same time we can also use Fido technology to provide a total solution 
to support the very good user experience. So that's why it's important. And uh, this year, Korea also tried to, 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 try to set up the G5 door and try to put the FIDO guideline in the government. So that's for Korea. And the second one in Taiwan, that, uh, as I just mentioned, that is the most important pick up in Taiwan's financial sector. That is, are some, right now, there are some, still some financial transaction mandated PKI. In the same time, the Taiwan uh, Certificate Authority or Taiwan uh, Financial Service provider also very, uh, also very take a lot of focus on the matches. So in the same time, in Taiwan, we also try to use PKI vital together to provide the very good user experience uh, e-identification mechanism for users. And uh, also in the other countries that we think that maybe, as, I, as, as we know, they are also thinking about how to uh, put PKI to leverage the other biometric technology such as Fido to, 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 make, it, to make, make it easier to deploy PKI. So, as I just mentioned that for PKI, we have very, very comprehensive framework. We have the CA, and in some, in some time, we also have the RA, Registration Authority, and the, in some time, we also have some kind of Registration Authority, and we have the user, and we also have the land party. So it's a triangle that is involved. Most of the identification of, and authentication should be involved by a third party, is the, the certificate authority. That's for PKI. But for FIDO, they try to leverage the biometric technology. And in the same time, they are very focused on the end-to-end -end methodology. Then it says that every transaction data should only be owned by end user and also between the land party. They don't want some third party to be able to play some roles in the transaction, in the, in the flow of identification. So basically, there are some similarities that both FIDO and PKI or use PKC, public key, public key cryptography, uh, pub, public cryptography. But then there are some difference between PKI and FIDO. For PKI is a triangle, and for FIDO is an end-to-end -end, uh, methodology. And uh, for PKI, we are very focused on the security of the endpoint device. But for FIDO, they are more focused on the convenience. So in FIDO, a lot of the biometric, biometric technology are developed. developed. So there are some similarity and there are also some 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 difference between PKI and FIDO. So this is some example of how PKI and FIDO can co exist in Korea. They have the K-FIDO guideline. They try to combine FIDO and the PKI certificate from the national PKI together. So in the endpoint, there are two libraries. The one library is PKI library, and the other is the FIDO library. And uh, they try to have some kind of relations, relationship between PKI library and the FIDO library. And in the right side, the server side, they have two systems. One is PKI server, one is FIDO server. So they, they set up some, some, some guideline or some process how PKI server can talk to FIDO server. So in the same time, if you are already a PKI user, you can just utilize the FIDO's biometric mechanism. And if you are a FIDO user, you can also apply for a new PKI certificate to be able to, 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 to leverage PKI's advantage. So this is for a FIDO example. And the second one is the Taiwan uh, PWID. PWID is a support uh, endorsed by governments. It's a national financial identification services that endorsed by financial, uh, financial 
government financial administration department, and the server that can also provide the vital service using PKI to the service provider. So that's the example in Taiwan how vital PKI can be work together. And then the, the other uh, case that in Thailand, this uh, study in the planning stage that in Thailand, Thailand try, also try to set up some kind of national financial e-identification system. And right now, there are some idea what kind of technology should be used in such kind of national e-identification uh, system. So right now, there are some, some plan that maybe we can just use the PKI final system to provide the national financial and education system for Thailand. And the last one is in Macau. In Macau, they already have a very good national uh, PKI infrastructure hosted by Macau Post. And uh, they are very special, uh, it's a very special use case that for, Ma for Macau national PKI system, they have a cloud PKI services. That the key was hosted by the centralized cloud services. So it's called the eSign cloud system. And so right now, the Macau eSign cloud system is also thinking about how to use Fido in the endpoint to be able to let users can access to the key in the cloud, very convenient. So then, right now, we have some kind of basic idea how this can be realized in the cloud-based PKI system to take the advantage of Fido. So this is the other uh, example that maybe in India, we can also leverage the national PKI in the Fido system. So right now, in the Asia PKI consortium, we also have a Tech Force work with Fido to study to try all the possibility and to support all neighbor countries how PKI and Fido can be deployed in their real applications. So based on the our survey from neighbor countries, then we start to provide some recommendation or provide some uh, su suggestions to APKC member and also to FIDO. So right now we have a joint task force between APKC and FIDO. And uh, maybe in next year, early next year, we, we will have a white paper for recommendation how PKI and FIDO can work together. And uh, we try to set up some, some process to provide the uh, members of FIDO and HOP kind of consortium can reference such kind of situation. So the best idea is that actually we think that FIDO and PKI are com complement to each other. That for PKI we have a third party called certificate authority, but for FIDO is a end-to-end model. So but 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 in FIDO they also have a they also have model called federation model. They say that they there may be a third party uh, federation between the identity providers. So we just suggest that a certificate authority can be an um, identi identified third party identified provider to do the federation. In such case that PKI didn't violate the end-to-end -end model of FIDO and also FIDO can take the advantage Fido want to do the real identification of users, they can just leverage the current CA system to link a key to a real user. So that's our basic ideas. And right now we have some recommendation to APIC and Fido. So we have some, some kind of crisis. So the, the first one is that PK and FIDO just share their, share their token of authenticator. And the second one, the key pair between FIDO and PKI can be synchronized. And the last one, the category, 
is a key pair of PKN and FIDO we share. But for the Connect 3, right now it's valid the FIDO's privacy principle. So right now we suggest that in the current deployment we can take CLIST 1 and CLIST 2 as a reference. That, and uh, actually, for, uh, as we learned from the example from Korea and Taiwan, that the CLIST 1 and CLIST 2 can already be implemented by extension of current vital protocol and uh, to combine with the current PKI standards. So it's feasible and it's actually it's also can be deployment right now. And for CLIP 3, then we try to use the same, the same key pair between PKI and Bible. Right now, we need some further discussion in Bible and also in, in members of APIC. So that's my short and conclusion that uh, in the current uh, internet society or mobile internet ecosystem, that we think that collaboration between countries or collaboration between international organizations is very important because there, are, there is no single technology or single mechanism can satisfy all the applications. And actually, in some, because we are from the Asia PKI Consortium, so from the viewpoint of PKI industry, we think that PKI has some kind of fundamental advantage that we have legal foundation, we also have some national deployments. So that's our current strength of PKI industry. But we think that we face many challenges in the new mobile internet ecosystem. So we think that we have to collaborate with other countries and also between international organizations. So as I just said, that the collaboration between APIC and FIDO, I think it's a very really good study point. And the second one, that currently, we think that the platform, the, for example, in the desktop, if we think that the operating system is a platform and also the web browser is a platform, and in the mobile device, Apple, iOS and uh, Android is also the platform. Right now, we think that many current platform is not PKI friendly. For example, right now there are many browser vendors try to try to discard the extensions. So, if you want to develop develop a PKI application based on web browser, right now we have to spend a lot of effort and uh, there are many different processes and many of them right now they can support the extension of PKI. So we think that how PKI can be implemented in a platform such as web browser or in a mobile operation system is very important for the future de development of PKI. And right now we have some solution the first one is we have the W3C and we have the API, but actually such kind of API is not so unified. So there are many different implementation between process. So the efforts of the CA or PKI vendor is very, there is a lot of effort. And the user experience among the process is different. So it's a very, big challenge for PKI. And uh, in some countries that we try they try to develop a local server that install a local server in the in, in your uh, operating system and in your web browser you just use the internal uh, communication between local services to use PKI. So maybe this is a good work workaround to stop the uh, incompatibility among web browser and among operating systems. But we think that in the future maybe we have more good solutions. So for example, we work with FIDO and right now the FIDO specification also can be adopted. Maybe 
they, they just propose the fiber space specification into the into w, the w triple C. So you can imagine that in the future, if we if I have a FIDO token, I can use the FIDO token with our PKI system in any operating system and any web browser and also any mobile device if we can work with FIDO. So we think that the PKI should be deployed in and work friendly in many internet platforms. It's very important. And in the other way, there are many new opportunities that for PKI and also some conditional challenges of PKI. We just discussed the production. And, but we don't know then what the condition is between PKI and production. Because in some countries, that they have some, there are some, some voices that say that blockchain can replace PKI. But we don't think that's true. So we try, we, we, we should have some kind of consensus, what the relation is, what is the position between PK and blockchain. And there is a more popular trend that in the future, in, in, the, in, in this year for IoT. So PKI, what PKI can play in the IoT applications, they're also a very important and interesting topic that we try to address. Okay, so that's all my presentation. Thank you. And uh, in addition to that, for APIC, we have a guest from APIC that uh, Dr. Chai is from Thailand. He's um, uh, on behalf of the chairperson of the Social Media Consortium and also Secretary General Iba from Hong Kong. So if you have any, any inquiry or any, anything you, you want to know about APIC, you can just find them and discuss with them. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, what is the current status? My name is Ashutosh. Uh, what is what is the current status of FIDO in your country or in Asia? We uh, forum which you are talking about. So whether whether it is going to be yeah status I can see there, but whether it is really getting into the end user's hand and it support FIDO, the internet services. But FIDO try to to engage with the financial service or engage with the government service, they have to take PKI into consideration. Yeah, so I just mentioned that because PKI especially in Asia country and in Europe is a very good infrastructure to support government service and financial service. But right now, by the way, they didn't have too much reallocation for the government service and financial service. So I think that if we can work together, then maybe we have better solutions for government service and financial service. Thank you.